Over the last few years, Washington has had some really good quarterbacks. You most recently had a breakout season for Michael Penix Jr., in which he led the entire country in passing yards, and then a couple years back, you had Jake Browning, who led the Huskies to the college football playoff. There have obviously been some other guys in the last few years as well, but those are the two big ones. But what if I told you that the subject of today's video was actually supposed to be a bigger deal than both of these two? He was a legacy quarterback, one of the top high school quarterbacks in the state of Washington's history, and was a five-star recruit. Unfortunately, just two years into his career, he is now moving down to the FCS level, and in the eyes of many, has been seen as a complete disappointment. But in today's video, I want to go through his story, talk about why he hasn't panned out at Washington, and ultimately what I think is next for him, and I think it could be a good thing. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe if you love college football content, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's go ahead and get started. So you're probably wondering who the subject of today's video is, and it is none other than former five-star quarterback Sam Heward. But in order to understand what has gone wrong for him, we first need to go back in time. The Sam Heward story starts with his father, Damon. He was a quarterback for Washington in the 1990s, and he would finish his career as the Huskies' all-time passing leader with over 5,692 yards. Unfortunately, he'd go undrafted in the NFL, but he'd have a son named Sam who would later take on the quarterback position. He's also related to Brock Heward, who was also a former Washington quarterback who became a star, a third round pick in the NFL draft, and is now a popular college football commentator. The bloodline was in the Heward family, and it was going to be passed down to Sam, and that last name really meant a lot to him. He said, quote, it means everything to me. At the same time, I really want to go on my own path and my own journey. It's really important for me to carry on the Heward name and to represent it the best way I can. Sam's first word in life was actually ball, and at four years old, he loved football and was invested. He started playing tackle football in sixth grade, playing for the East Side Crusaders Youth League in the state of Washington. He could name all the NFL quarterbacks and different quarterback schemes, and his future high school coach knew he'd be special even in his youth. He said, quote, I remember thinking, man, this kid's going to be a great quarterback someday. You could tell immediately he was going to be this quarterback who took it serious. His family got him the training he needed and gave him the guidance he needed to become a star quarterback when he arrived at Kennedy Catholic High School, but that was not supposed to happen. He always thought he was going to go to East Side Catholic High School, and when he was growing up, Kennedy ran a wing T formation, which is not great for quarterbacks, but Kennedy's new coach and system got him to go there instead. Head coach Sheldon Cross put Sam in a position to be a star while he was there. Heward said, quote, We run an air raid system similar to Mike Leach and Graham Harrell. It allows me to show I can make every throw a quarterback should make. This system would help him put up big numbers and get recruited, but could it hurt his groove down the road? As it began to blow up, he was asked about where he wanted to go. He said, quote, I never thought of going anywhere else. Nevada was the first school to offer, and my mom went with me to Tennessee, but I was always waiting on that Washington offer. Head coach Chris Peterson offered him a scholarship towards the end of his sophomore season, and he committed 11 days later. This was in November of 2018, and they had just won the Apple Cup. He already committed to Washington, but he was a part of the class of 2021, so he would have some time to wait. Before that, Sam had taken unofficial visits to both South Carolina and Tennessee, and had actually been to USC a couple times as well. He always wanted to go to Washington, though, and would eventually ink his name there. Because of his dad's Miami Dolphins connection with Dan Marino, Sam would get a chance to train with him. The two co-owned a winery, and because of that, they'd make a couple trips to see each other each year, and Sam got to learn from one of the grades. Sam was an absolute superstar. He became the state's all-time leading passer as he finished with 13,214 yards and 153 passing touchdowns. He was better in high school than both his dad and uncle, and expectations were going to be through the roof. The scouts also were high on him. One said, quote, he is a quick, effortless release, and he has no wasted motion. He can make all the throws, and he's equally adept at deep balls while also delivering in the short and intermediate throws. He has a high football IQ, can read the defense, goes through his progressions well, and can deliver the ball. He projects as an immediate Power 5 starter and a future first-round NFL draft pick. This is one thing that can destroy a player's career is when the expectations are just a little bit too high. He was close to breaking Kellen Moore's high school touchdown record, and he broke Brat Rippon's yard record, and he had done everything he could possibly do pretty much, and the expectations on him were going to be ginormous. According to 24-7 Sports, Heward was a five-star recruit, the number three quarterback, and the 12th best player in the class of 2021. Sadly, despite the quarterback bloodline, Heward's career at Washington did not go as planned, so how would he ultimately do as a Husky? 
Sam Heward would arrive at Washington in 2021 under new head coach Jimmy Lake, and he'd be put in immediate quarterback battle with Dylan Morris. Going into the year, he ended up winning the backup job, and some thought he was ultimately going to redshirt, but against Arizona, he would get his chance to play for the first time. Dylan Morris got injured and had a nosebleed so bad that Sam had to go in the game. Unfortunately, the 2021 season was defined by Jimmy Lake mismanaging the entire team, so Sam just came in and handed the ball off a few times before Dylan came back. Coach Lake said, quote, Normally what you do with a younger player is you make sure you call plays that he feels good about. He knows all the plays, but you definitely want to set him or anybody up for success. This was extremely confusing because many believed that Sam was ready, and it was just very unclear what was going on with him. It's not like Dylan Morris had a good 2021 season or Washington was having a good year either, so no one really understood why Heward didn't get much of a real chance when he played. It seemed he was set up for failure while he was there, and at minimum was mismanaged by the coaching staff. As a freshman, he ended up playing in four games, most notably having some time against Washington State. Unfortunately, against Wazoo, Heward struggled immensely. He went 17 of 31 for 190 yards with a touchdown, but the kicker was he had four interceptions. This was an awful performance for him, but at the same time, the season was a complete disaster, and personally, I believed he was set up for failure. With Jimmy Lake eventually getting fired and Kalen DeBoer coming in from Fresno State, DeBoer would take a flyer on his old quarterback Michael Penix in Indiana, and Penix would come in and win the job. This meant Heward was once again going to be a backup, and he only appeared in one game in 2022, having 24 yards. With Michael Penix deciding to skip the draft and come back for another year, the writing was on the wall for Sam to potentially make an exit. Would he wait one more year to battle it out, or would he go somewhere where he could play right away? That was the big question. Eventually, he told the Seattle Times he was entering the portal. He said, quote, What do I want more? Do I want to play right now, or do I want to continue to stick it out because this has been my dream? Do I really want to leave here like this, having not really played much? It was not how I expected to come into Washington, but sometimes that's life. Part of me just really wanted to stick around and continue to grow and develop, and then hopefully get my opportunity down the road. But I wanted a fresh start and a chance to complete, and a chance to compete to go play somewhere else. That's what ultimately led me to making this decision to enter the transfer portal. He was going to be stuck behind Michael Penix, and there was no guarantee he was going to beat out Dylan Morris, so he decided he was going to go play. Except, this is where things somewhat got weird. The Husky staff told him he could come back if he wanted to if he didn't get a lot of attention, but a couple days ago, he finally found his new school. He committed to Cal. No, not the Cal Golden Bears, but Cal Poly. Cal Poly has not been known for football lately. They went 2-9 in 2022 with a 1-7 mark in conference play. Despite getting interest from schools such as TCU, Stanford, and Florida, he would decide to drop down a level to the FCS, and that will be his new home. So why the heck would he go to Cal Poly? From an outsider's perspective, it makes absolutely no sense, but there's one huge reason, and I think it could be a genius that could save his career. His former head coach, Sheldon Cross, is now the team's offensive coordinator. Sam will have a chance to go down to a lower level, have some pressure off his back, and play with the coach that led him to all his success. I think he'll go in and be the starter right away, and could have a monster season at the FCS level, and eventually play his way back up into the FBS. While some will call Heward a bust to this point, I don't think he's gotten a fair chance, and I think it's way too early to be saying that. I did want to make a video on the Sam Heward story though, because I didn't get a chance to while he was in high school, and I think this is definitely an intriguing story to watch if you're a big fan of college football and quarterback recruiting. I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes on Cal Poly for him next year, and I wonder how Penix and Washington will do for the future. But what do you guys think? If you're a Washington or a Sam Heward fan, what do you think happened to him at Washington, and what do you expect from him next? And also be sure to let me know another prodigy, recruit, or player I could do a what happened to video on next. Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about the rise of Michael Penix. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace. Thank you.